Welcome to this integrated math 3 practice test from subpart 2, which you can use a calculator. I'm going to do that probably here. Um, question number 11. The question says the function f of x is given by the equation f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 2. The values for the quadra quadratic function h of x are shown in the table. So I think the first thing that you have to realize, and probably already do, is that this is not the same as any of this. It's, they're two different ones, so don't cross the streams, I guess. Um, which statement is true. So I'm going to get some feel for what these things look like. I'll start with h of x. So it's a quadratic function. At 0 is at negative 6, so something like this right here. At negative 1, I'm at negative 3. And at negative 2, which shouldn't be there, should be much closer. way up here so there's one side and you'll notice it kind of mirrors that over here as well so what you're dealing with is this 0 and 6 that's your minimum point and also kind of it's, it happens to also be your y-intercept and that's what they're asking about they want to know about your y-intercept so it's right here at 0 negative 6 that's for h of x so this is what I'm comparing to this up here. There's a bunch of different ways that I could actually look at this one. One of those would simply be graphing it. I mean, so you could just look at it. Hopefully, if my calculator will do what it's supposed to do, this won't take very long. And I can graph it and wait. And then if I want to know what the y-intercept is, if you hit second and trace on the TI-84 plus or equivalent, uh, you can go to the minimum if you want to do that because it is facing upwards. It's, this is not, the a value is not negative. You could also just go to the value because, I don't, you know, it looks like that's where it's located, but I don't really care about that. I could go to the value and say when x is 0, which is what the y-intercept is, I get 6. So for f of x... my value is 0 and positive 6. So I can go ahead and make my comparison now and we will get to that. But the issue really is uh, what could I do if I don't have a graphing calculator to have the standard one? Well, if they're asking about the y-intercept, they just want to know where x is 0, what do you get? So you would just do 3 times 0 squared plus 2. Uh, 0 squared is nothing. Plus 2, 3 times 2 does give you 6. So when I substitute in 0, I got 6, and that's the story to be told. So this one's not that difficult to do because they're asking about just the y-intercept. Uh, and now it's all about perspective because they will ask you questions from the perspective of one versus the other. I would, You might even make f of x and h of x in this form to remind yourself that h of x is on the bottom. It's beneath it. So when I'm looking through my answer choices, the y-intercept of h of x is 12 units below f of x. And that's true, because 6 to 0 gives you 6, and then six, 0 to negative 6 gives you 12 more. So a is a correct answer for number 11. Looking at the other ones, b. The, the y-intercept of f of x is 12 units below f of x is not below, it's above, so that's when that one's out. And then they give you different units. f of x is 4 units above. It's not 4 units above, it's 12. And 6. The nice thing for me was to be able to do here was to graph them both. Uh, I graphed one on the calculator and one here. So I have a visual picture in my head of what the answer is supposed to look like. And then this little amount of writing here, the small amount of writing here, makes a big difference if you're trying to get the answer from a perspective point. Because when they give you the questions on the 10 ready test, they love to do annoying things like give you answers that are they're both 12, and they just flip these around. And most of the time, the A one is not the correct answer, uh, or they put this in your head to sort of get in your kitchen a little bit to figure out how to get the correct answer next time. So that's it. Question number 11 is A.